Hey guys, welcome to another Game Asset tutorial series. And this one we're going to start with possibly the most basic of all game props you can imagine is a simple wooden crate. Nice little beginner project uh, before we build on to more complex stuff. So let's uh, fire on over to 3D Studio Max and we'll see just what we're going to be creating here. So I've already pre-made a little preview version for you to show you what you're going to make. It's really just a cube with a couple of extra details at it. And uh, first thing we want to do is we want to look up some reference imagery. So I looked up a couple of different types of crates here to see kind of what material and what dimensions and uh, how the, the wood's laid out on that. So I had two different styles of crates. I do like this one, but it's a little bit more complex. I might do that in a separate short tutorial later. What I'm actually going to focus on is one of these kind of crates. Uh, that's the best photo there. One of these kind of ones. That's just your typical cube game crate. So, with that in mind, uh, always be looking at reference. No matter what you're modeling, always be looking at reference so you know sort of the size and the scale of the things you want to make. Uh, let me see now. So, with that in mind, we're going to go ahead and start creating a crate. Now, this little guy. You can see there the kind of shape and dimensions of them. Uh, we've got these little support struts around the sides, a little dent in the top, and it's flat on the bottom. Now, if we're making a really, really detailed one, we could actually add more detail to this. But this is meant to be an absolute beginner tutorial, so we're keeping very, very simple geometry here and simple textures as well. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to delete this guy. I'm going to start from scratch, and I'm going to make sure that I am working over my origin point here. Uh, first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to customize unit setup. And what I want to do here is I want to make sure that my unit setup is set to centimeters. And if I click on this system unit setup button as well, I want to make sure that that is also set to centimeters. Reason being, the Unreal Engine uh, defaults to centimeters as well. So I want to make sure we're scaling everything correctly. I'm going to start with a box. I'm going to draw it and raise it up. And what I'm going to do is, I'm going to move, scroll down here, I'm going to set it three length segments, three width and three height segments, so we get this nice uh, grid effect here. If you're not seeing that grid effect, press F4 on your keyboard and that will turn that on and off. Uh, the wireframe overlay, the polygons. And what I want to do, I want to set the length to 120 centimeters. I want to set the width to 80 centimeters. And I want to set the height to 80 centimeters. So 80, not 8,000. There we go. So that's a nice little create shape there. And at this point, what I will do is I will rename it as my create. Uh, the color, okay for now. I'm not going to change that. I can see my lines nice and clearly. I'm just going to right click and convert this to an editable poly. Now at this point, if we refer back to our photo, we can see that these are quite narrow. The support beams are quite narrow. And I'm going to use these polygons as those support beams, but I need to just change the shape of them. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to come to my, uh, let me see, wait, there's something not quite right with this just yet. I want this to be square. Top left. Oh no, it is, it's fine, it's okay. So one of your uh, dimensions, uh, and Mikey is the front, yours might be the side, it's going to be a perfect square. And what I want to do is I want to go to my vertex mode. And I'm just going to select all of these verts, just drag a box around them, and that'll select all of the verts in the middle, and I'll do that for both sides as well. You'll see that it'll select everything all the way through. I'm going to take our scale tool, and we're just going to widen these out. Just I only want the horizontal axis. We're just going to widen these out. There we go. And then I'm going to do the same with all these verts, the horizontal ones. And do the same and give it a nice sort of a square cross section. So if I zoom in here in these corners, these should be roughly square. And that's perfect. And now I am going to do the same on this axis. And I'm just going to drag over these. Uh, let me see if I actually just keep working on the orthographic view, make it easier. 
So select all of these verts and scale them out again until I get a square uh, square corners here. Okay, perfect. That'll do lovely. I'm eyeballing it. It's probably not exact, but I'm not too worried about that. Um, now what I want to do is I want to go to my polygon mode and I want to start selecting some of these polys. I want to select the inner poly of each face. There we go. Uh, I'm not going to select the bottom. I'm going to leave that as the base. You could if you want it. You could select that and put it in. But I'm going to make a prop that will always be sitting uh, with that bottom side on the ground. So you never really see it. And what I want to do is I want to extrude these in the way. Just about a few centimeters. So when we hit extrude it's going to stick it out 10 centimeters. That's about too much. I'm going to put this to negative... Uh, let's see, negative four centimeters. A wee bit more, maybe, than real life, but at least it'd be nice and visible for us. And I just hit the little tick here. So, there we go, we've got the basis of our shape. The final thing I want to do now is add some support structures to this. And to do that, I'm just going to create a separate little box. Just a long, thin little box. And this one, it only needs to be one segment long okay there we go and the width of that i know that the the depth here is four centimeters so this one we will also make four centimeters the height we will make it maybe just a nice even 15 so these numbers are a little nicer and the length uh we're going to adjust the length by i so whatever it is uh don't worry about that and now I'm going to take one of these and just move it just a little bit so it is just sort of breaking the surface of that that face there. And I'm going to move it roughly in position. And I'm going to rotate it so it goes with this top right corner to the bottom left. Now a couple of things that can make this a bit easier. You can see my pivot point here is right at the bottom of this box. Uh, when you're making a, a box primitive, it always sets a pivot at the bottom. And when I'm rotating this, it might actually be better for it in the middle. So to do that, I'm just going to go to this third little tab over here, the hierarchy tab. I'm going to click this button, affect pivot only. And then I'm going to hit center of the object. Now watch what happens to this little box here. If I hit center of the object, ping, goes right to the middle. And that can make it a lot easier to rotate things. So I'm just going to deactivate this affect pivot only mode. And now what I can do is go to my rotation tool and I can start to rotate this. Now rotation is a wee bit funny. It doesn't always like to grab these axes the way it wants. But I can rotate this now just about that much. Let me see how does that look. That's okay. And I'll move it a wee bit. Maybe just need to rotate it a little bit more. Just give it another, say, five degrees. You'll notice that uh, I've got the angle snaps toggle activated. And what that allows you to do is rotate it in exactly five degree increments, which can be very handy. And let me see, how are we? That's not too bad. It's a little bit short here. So what I need to do is I'm going to right click and convert this to an edible poly. I'm going to go to my vertex mode. I'm going to select all of my vertexes. And I'm going to scale this up a little bit. But I want to actually scale it along the length. And you'll notice there that these axes don't align with the angle of the box. That's because these are set to scale in what's called world space coordinate mode. Uh, in which case the x the x axis is always back and forth. The y axis is always this way. And the z axis is always vertically up. We can actually change this to the object itself. So when we rotate the object, these axes go with it. To do that, we just come up to this little box here in the top. Where it will always usually be set to view as the default. But we want to set this to local. And set it to local means that the axes will rotate to whatever object we are working on. Or at least it should. Let me see, did that work? Local, there we go, yes. So you see now that the uh, axes are aligned to the box. And that will let us 
select these verts. My way is out not working here. Okay, if I set it to parent, uh, that'll make sense. Setting it to parent, the the object itself, corners this way, and the vertex is a sub object of that. So that'll work. Okay. Hopefully, it should just work when you set it to normal, uh, or set it to local. But in this case, I had to try parent. If it's not working, just uh, play with these and get the one that looks right. So I'm just going to expand this up just the tiniest little amount, just to make sure that that box fills out those corners. And that's cool. We've got my move tool and just make sure this is positioned as best as I can get it, as evenly as I can get it. Okay, brilliant stuff. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to move this guy just out a little bit again. And I'm going to go to my polygon mode. Now, on this little support beam, we're never going to see this back face. So, I'm just going to delete that polygon. We're also never going to see this top one. Or this bottom one. If I push this back in, you will see what I mean. If I right click and go back to top level, just do the whole object. If I push that in there, you will see that those back faces are never visible on the final model. So, yes, we're getting rid of them. That will lower our poly count, which is nice, but not incredibly vital for such a low poly object as this. But the other added benefit is it will make our unwrap a lot simpler. Unwrapping, I find, is one of the most tedious parts of 3D modeling. Um, and the, all, the other benefit of having fewer polys is that uh, you can maximize your texture space. You've got less polys actually competing for space on your final texture. So uh, what I'm doing here is I'm just going to take that one and uh, let me see. Rotate that round, duplicate it, and rotate it round to the other side and push it into position. And you can see it's just sunk into the surface a wee bit. It's not quite matching with that. What I might want to do as well is the main box object. Again, its pivot is down in the very bottom here. Uh, do I want to move the pivot? No, actually, I'm not going to move that pivot. I'm going to keep that pivot where it is. It's it's in the center, looking down, but it's on the, the ground plane, which would actually be handier. So when I'm in on rail and I'm placing it, that means when I place it on a terrain or on a, on a level, the, ground, the, the bottom surface should be level with the ground. So I'm just going to leave that as is, actually. But I'm going to duplicate these a couple of times more. And how I'm actually duplicating these is just with the move tool. I'm holding the shift key. And then when I move with the shift key held, it creates a copy. And I just want to leave that as copy. I'm not going to change any of these options and hit OK. So now I'm going to rotate that guy 90 degrees. I'm going to try to. Sometimes these axes don't quite stick correctly. I'm going to go there, 90 degrees. Move into position again. Whoops. Being careful what axes I select on the gizmo. There we are. Rotate you as best we can in position. That looks okay. Yep, that looks perfect. And now we're going to take these vertexes. And just scale them. So again, we're still in that parent mode. And we'll just scale these in until everything has disappeared. And it's just filling into those corners. Perfect. Uh, now, but what I want to do is... I'm actually just going to rotate this one again. Uh, this way. That's just a little bit more aesthetically pleasing with the box. When it sort of the goes up and it goes down. And then up again. So... There we are, just to get that right visually. Uh, go to my top level again, so we can duplicate the whole object. Move tool, hold shift, move it down, hit OK. Once more, we will rotate this just by 180 degrees. And move into position. Uh, 
That looks about right to me. Yeah, okay. So that's as much detail as I'm going to add to this box. Uh, we could spend a lot more time. We could uh, make a high poly version of this for getting more detail baked into it. I'm not going to do that. We're going to keep this very, very simple. This is a baby's first 3D game asset. We're going to leave the model here. We're going to go file and save. Uh, always remember 10 minute save rule. And we're going to come back in part two of this video where I'm going to show you how to unwrap this for texture afterwards. Okay, so thank you very much for watching and I'll see you for part two.